Success Insight shares the stories of the people with passion and drive who make things happen in the world. Here's your host, Howard Fox. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Success Insight podcast. Now, for most of us, we have full and part-time jobs that we go to each week. But there are some individuals who are undertaking another type of pursuit to earn money outside of their day job. Broadly speaking, this is called a side hustle. With this in mind, today we're launching a new series on the Success Insight podcast that we call Side Hustle Saturday. In each episode of Side Hustle Saturday, we'll introduce you to a new entrepreneur and learn about their side hustle. Our first guest on Side Hustle Saturday is career consultant Joyce Yu. Joyce, welcome to the Success Insight Podcast. Thank you, Howard. Great to be here. In the spirit of full disclosure for our listeners, Joyce and I are actually colleagues. And as I just shared, Joyce is a career consultant, so am I. And she was actually one of the reasons how this idea of Side Hustle Saturday came about. So first, Joyce, thank you. My pleasure. I'm happy to be here. So Joyce, uh, before we get into your side hustle, would you please give our listeners a little bit of uh, background about who you are and what you've been doing career-wise? Sure. So I've been in the careers and recruitment space for about 14 years. I actually fell into it by accident. I had gone to a recruitment firm so that they could help me find a job. And they did, just not with another company. They ended up hiring me. And I became a recruiter eventually. And that sort of parlayed into career coaching and consulting, which I do now. And I really enjoy working with people, figuring out who they are, their goals, their strengths, and kind of helping them find that perfect match and where they can go next. I definitely can empathize what you've shared, and um, that's what I love about the career coaching and consulting that we do. With the idea of a side hustle, I'm curious, you know, please, I, w- I want you to share it, but I'd also be very interested in when did this spark, this ember get lit? that, oh, wow, this is interesting. I think I'd like to learn more about it. So for our listeners, Joyce, you know, what's your side hustle? My side hustle is voiceover acting. And really, the first thing I can remember wanting to be when I was a kid was an actor. And for much of my adult life, I've been doing some sort of side hustle in addition to working in corporate. So I've done several independent films. I've done some stage and acting as well, some improv, a little bit of stand-up comedy here and there. So I've always been working on some kind of creative project. There's always been that creative spark. And a few years ago, I was invited to do some character voices for a story-based podcast. And I just loved it. It was so fun. It really reignited something in me. And I decided to take that direction and really pursue voiceover seriously. And when you began to pursue voiceover, did you know going in, like, this is what the breadth of this idea is going to turn into? Or is this a little bit of learning along the way or a combination of the two? I had a little bit of an idea. The initial hook for me was doing character voices, which is fun. It's silly. It's very imaginative. I knew, of course, people did voiceover for commercial narration for, say, documentaries and films, um, phone holds, you know, when you call your bank and they say, thank you for calling. Please press one for customer service and that sort of a thing. But I quickly learned there's a fairly standard way to get into voiceover, and that is to start by taking classes so that you can hone your chops, be strong in your craft, and then you start to learn the business side. And a big milestone is recording your demo, uh, which is a few short clips cut together to demonstrate kind of your voice quality and also your range. And then from there, you can go out and start to audition. And so I liked that there was a pretty clear 
path. And there's a great school here, a studio in Las Vegas called the Voice Actor Studio. And that's where I've taken my classes um, and learned all the aspects of what it takes to be a, vo a working voiceover actor. So at the Voice Actor Studio, is it you and a class? Is it you with a uh, just one-on-one uh, -on -one with a teacher? How does that work? They offer both options. At the beginning, typically you are taking classes in a group setting. And then once you get to a certain point, they do recommend, especially if you want to focus on a particular genre, to start taking one-on-one -on -one coaching with somebody that has expertise in that area. And what is your genre when it comes to doing voice over work? The areas that appeal to me most are character work, as I mentioned, also e-learning. Because of the amount of time that I've spent in corporate settings and for a good chunk of it, doing some sort of training or presenting myself, I also used to be a teacher. So I love the idea of not only selfishly being able to learn something while I'm narrating, but then also be able to convey information to other people who are trying to learn in a way that hopefully is engaging and uh, informative. So, you know, you and I listen to a lot of pre-recorded webinars that are very much, you know, good high-end production. And is that the, the type of voiceover work you're talking about? You're going to teach somebody how to use a, 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 an application, a tool, how to accomplish, a, how to accomplish some type of uh, professional goal. Is that the type of voiceover you mean? Right. That's very common in the e-learning space. Sometimes they also like to have scenarios where people are role-playing and acting out different parts to train, for example, salespeople on how to be effective or customer service people and that sort of a thing. So there's opportunity to play a role, but also to be the narrator that's conveying the information. When you take on a, a project what or you know your your peers who are also in this uh, profession because it is a profession what type of input do you as the voiceover actor have in the creative process design process beyond just being the voiceover talent well typically you do you get to bring something to the character. And even as a narrator, that's a character. You are a particular type of person. Uh, taking e-learning, for example, are you a manager, for example? Maybe you're a manager speaking to your team, or maybe you are speaking more as a peer to a new employee. And so it's having that point of view, uh, bringing that kind of characterization and sound so that you decide do you want to sound very authoritative or a little bit more accessible and friendly? And some of that is included in the direction of the script, of course, and ultimately it is up to them. But who you are and your sort of interpretation is something that you bring to it. In some cases, clients may be open to you improvising a little bit or adding a little bit or even helping with copy editing and copywriting. It just really depends on the client. Okay. And as you continue to grow uh, this side hustle, how do you stay sharp within this profession so that, you know, when, when people find you, and I want to talk about that in a minute, but when they find you, they know, oh my God, we're getting Joyce Yu here. So how do you, as a voiceover actor, stay at the top of your game? So I do a thing that daily, which I, I call VO Lab, voiceover lab. And the reason I call it that is because I approach it more as experimentation versus practice. And I find that mentally that wording helps because there's the idea that practice makes perfect. Well, in voiceover, there is really no such thing as perfect. People want you to bring yourself and your own personality to it. Oftentimes nowadays, they want more of that real, authentic, conversational style versus a more formal, buttoned-up, announcer-type style. And so for me, as a recovering perfectionist, it's helpful for me to think of it as experimental and as play. And I'm always learning things by recording and listening back to myself. 
and just continuing to take classes. Uh, most pros, even very seasoned pros, continue to take classes or work with coaches depending on what they want to work on. You know, you, you just brought up something, uh, the idea of being a recovering perfectionist. And I used to tell people I'm a recovering IT business consultant. <laughs> How do you work on a project but not get into the, the space of, oh, my God, I'm not good enough? Or, uh, you know, I'm up against some really seasoned pros for this potential project. How do you stay mentally sharp in have that that mindset like I'm in the game, I'm going for the gold here? Yeah, that's pretty challenging at times. And it's something that I've had to work on a lot. Something that they keep emphasizing in the voiceover world, you just hear it constantly from various coaches and experts is, you know, the thing that you have that no one else has is you. And your uniqueness is the most valuable asset that you bring to it. And even if you can do characters and lots of different voices and have a lot of range, most working VO professionals are booked to do their own voice. And so that's something that they remind us of is not to discount what we already bring to the table. So having confidence in that, reminding yourself of that, I think is helpful. And just the idea that it's really more about the perspective and interpretation that you bring to it versus perhaps your exact voice. When you look back now, I mean, what you have accomplished, I mean, most definitely as a career consultant, recruiter, uh, teacher, I mean, you've had a very uh, wide ranging journey. You're now have this creative pursuit. Are there any lessons learned or aha moments for you as you kind of look back and then look forward of where you're going with the side hustle? Well, you're right. I've had a very varied career. And I used to think I was a little bit all over the place. And then I had kind of a revelation that the thing that all of my jobs have had in common are effective communication or storytelling in a way. And so I often refer to myself as a storyteller. And whether that is um, explaining to my clients about how to express their career journey, or whether it's through teaching, acting, writing, it's all storytelling and, and communicating to people in a way that can help them see things from a new perspective or imagine things in a different way, that type of a thing. So that was a key lesson for me. And another one is just kind of going back to the whole recovering perfectionist thing is to embrace imperfection. And in my case, I even tell myself to embrace mediocrity because saying embrace imperfection it just kind of sounds a little bit trite to me. But if I actually say embrace mediocrity, I think that that is, feels radical to a perfectionist. And so purposely trying to do things in a way that is not what my standard of excellence can be very freeing. And knowing that not everything that I try is going to be something that I'm going to be judged on. And so to give myself freedom to play, even as an adult, I think, especially in America, we have this kind of cult of productivity. And even the idea of a side hustle at times, anything that you enjoy and maybe have some talent in, oh, you should monetize that. You should turn that into something. And in my case, of course, I do want to have a business from my voiceover, but there are other pursuits that I have that some people have encouraged me to monetize or turn into a side hustle. And when I feel instinctively that that's going to suck the fun out of it, I kind of try to actively resist that and give myself space to play even as an adult. Oh, I love that. And thank you so much for sharing that. You know, I'm curious, uh, a couple of questions. So, you know, I produce and, you know, host the Success Inside podcast. I work at home because of our COVID-19 like you. I have a desk. I have a huge wicker room divider in front of me. I have a old Turkish Kaleem hanging from it to help deaden the sound. I know that sound and voice quality 
is important in what I do for my podcast. Now I've got a window open and I just, you know, at 11 minutes and 40 seconds of this podcast, this car with a very loud engine came right by and I'm, I'm going to give a note to my editor, Zach, I need you to deaden that sound, get rid of it. Okay. Your voice, by the way, Joyce is like spot on. I suppose I could be in a, in a studio and have a soundproof room. It's just not going to happen just now. However, as a voiceover actor, the the sound is so critical. So what does the studio look like for you? And especially, you know, we are in the midst, still in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. We're not going anywhere, you know, to a studio somewhere. So how do you produce your work? So my home studio is actually in my walk-in closet. And that's very common for a lot of voiceover artists. Because when you have the clothes in there, that automatically creates that kind of sound absorption, essentially preventing the sound from reflecting off of hard surfaces. And that's the thing that you want to avoid is reflection off of hard surfaces. And so I've also added some acoustic foam treatment to the ceiling and walls in here. So that helps with the absorption. Because I live in an apartment complex and there's external noises, I have what is called a shotgun microphone. So it's unidirectional and it just picks up sound that's coming from my voice. And the shotgun microphone is one that's typically used in film and TV productions. If you've ever heard of a boom mic, that's the type of mic that they're using on a boom pole. So that's one of the, uh, a few of the things that I use to uh, help with improving the sound. Um, I also have a pop filter which helps with those hard, like those kind of, we call plosives, where air gets pushed out of your mouth quite forcefully. It helps to mitigate some of those harsh sounds. Very good. Very good. Joyce, before we leave, and, and I, I'm going to put you on the spot because I wouldn't be me if I don't occasionally put my guests on the spot. It's not a bad spot. <laughs> Is there a, um, a voice, um, uh, that you have used that you really find just kind of, God, I love using this voice. I love, I love how it sounds, what it does that you would be willing to share. So I'm putting you on the spot. If you'd rather not do that, that's okay. But you know, any, anything come to mind for you? Hmm. A voice that I love to use. I mean, it seems kind of silly because I think we all universally hate those phone hole voices yeah. uh, when you're trying to get through to customer service, oh. but th they're actually very fun to do. <laughs> okay. Okay. So it might be, thank you for calling Success Inside Podcast, hosted by Howard Fox. For customer service, press one. For business hours, press two. For all other inquiries, press three or stay on the line for an operator. Thank you. Oh my God, that's fantastic. So I think I have a, <laughs> I have a job for you, Joyce. I have a job for you. <laughs> so if our listeners would like to learn more about you and your work, where are the best places for them to go? So the best place is going to be my website, which is JoyceU.com. That's J-O-Y-C-E-Y-O-O.com. And uh, you can also find me on LinkedIn. Fantastic. Well, Joyce, thank you so much for joining us on Side Hustle Saturday, our first guest, and really appreciate just hearing about, you know, what, what it means to be a voiceover actor and just the, the nuances and your lessons and your journey into this very creative side hustle. So thank you so much for taking time out of the day and spending it with us. Thanks, Howard. This was really a lot of fun. I appreciate it. Fantastic. All right, folks. Here you have it. We have just launched the first episode of Side Hustle Saturday, and we hope to be bringing you more episodes where we're going to talk with, you know, folks that have those full part-time jobs they go to every week, but on the side, they have a little hustle going on, and we're going to see what kind of creative side hustles are out there. So, you know, if uh, with Joyce here, the first episode, I'm, I think we set the bar pretty high here. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what we can come up with. I, I will, in the spirit of full disclosure again, 
I'm going to be bringing my other coworker on. Uh, she's got a very interesting side hustle. So I think this is going to be a very interesting series of podcasts, and we certainly hope that you enjoy them as well. Uh, please visit us on the Success Insight podcast page. Do comment or share the episode or any, any of the other episodes that we have available. You can find us on Facebook and on LinkedIn, Success Insight Podcast as well. We are also on YouTube and we're also on the major podcast stations, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Pandora, and we're now even on Amazon Music. So lots of opportunities to view our episodes and also to download them. So if you're going to go off for your morning walk, hey, our episode today is just over 20 minutes. So that, that's a good walk. So you can enjoy hearing about Joyce and her uh, side hustle. So there you have it, folks. This is Howard Fox, the Success Insight Podcast, the uh, launch episode of Side Hustle Saturday. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, go out there, have a phenomenal day, and we'll see you on the next episode of the Success Insight Podcast. Take care now. Success Insight is a production of Fox Coaching and First Story Strategies. Find us online, successinsightpodcast.com.